I didn't feel tied down anymore to basically anything that would keep me from fully questioning my mm. beliefs and my faith. And I even found myself wanting Christianity to not be true. Holy moly, guys. Holy moly. <laughs> we have some things to talk about. Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome to my channel. Welcome if you haven't been here before. I'll keep this brief because you're here for one reason and one reason only. Bethany Beale of Girl Defined posted a video with her husband Dave in which they revealed that Dave is deconstructing his Christian faith. It's a lot. It's super fucking interesting. I'm not supposed to swear that early in a video. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my head around that. I'm sorry. Did you know Dave swears? He curses because they're American. In the UK, if you curse, someone ends up turned into a newt. I sound gross and coldy. I look tired. My man was, was snoring up a storm last night, but we've got too much to do, okay? We're just gonna have to move on and accept that this is the reality. Has Girl Defined ever done a, a video about that? What to do if your husband becomes a swamp monster when he lies down to sleep? $169. <laughs> yeah, the last time we talked about Bethany, it was about her $169 sex courses for Christian women. So this is gonna be a little bit different. Disclaimer up front. I'm gonna talk about positives in this video. Overall, I think this is a net positive. I think when anybody is deconstructing and comes out and does that publicly, it is so brave and so inspiring for so many people, especially if they're already a known figure, that is super brave and super helpful. So I think this is a net pog positive. Pog poggers. This is a net poggers. <laughs> I'm just going to drink some more coffee real quick. Have I had my medication today? <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm going to share a lot of positive thoughts about this video, so I'm going to preempt the comments reminding us how horrible Girl Defines views are and have been. Yes, they have been mean, just unnecessarily horrible. The beliefs they share are actively harmful and worse, they bundle those in alongside fluffy, nice, friendly things. And that makes them seem relatable and compassionate, which I'm sure in many ways they are but that makes them kind of a gateway drug to fundamentalism. Still think their book is the most illuminating thing where it describes their upbringing on how they became how they are. If you haven't seen it, please do watch my video on it with Savvy Wright's books. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot. Those things are all still true. Girl Defines core message. Their nonsensical transphobic car rants. I haven't changed my opinion about those things at all. They're all still shitty. However, and this is sometimes lost when we discuss things on social media, but stay with me for a second. People are three-dimensional, and everyone involved in Girl Defined is actually a person. So they can say and do things that are good and bad. So this is just to preempt those people who might think that I have forgotten about X or Y bad thing. Sometimes people are doing that. I'm holding a, <laughs> a gummy vitamin in my hand <laughs> while I finish this preparatory intro. Um, sometimes people will, like, tell me things I didn't know. Sometimes I'll just watch a video and respond to someone and people will be like, did you know they're a secret racist? And I didn't know. So that can be helpful, but I've dug into Girl Defined a lot. I know their messaging. I know the harm they have done. I know the hurtful things they think about communities I'm in, which makes it difficult for me to approach things they say in a positive light. I do think this is a net positive. I also have some critical thoughts about it. We're just going to approach this like grown-ups, and because we are generally such a lovely community, I think that is exemplified by the fact that we have recurring Christian commenters who are comfortable being here. I expect a level of calm, respectful comments. Absolutely level whatever criticism you feel fair, but don't go and harass anyone over this. Blah, blah, blah. You know how it is. In many ways, this is going to be a lot like the video I made on Paul and Morgan after they did uh, a video with uh, Jacqueline and David Frank. Uh, I thought there were good things about it that should be celebrated, even though they were still, you know, assholes in lots of ways. And then they did a response, a video to me, and they credited me as Bella Thorne in the description. Remember that? I'm not still bitter about it. Also, this is an unimportant throwaway thing, but Paul and Morgan responded to this uh, Dave and Bethany video in the same video as they reviewed Dune Part 2, which is just so funny to me. Go and watch Dune Part 2. It's, it's really good. <laughs> I just love a big worm. Okay, this is the most real and human I have ever seen Bethany Beale in a video. I haven't seen much of Dave before. I don't have much context for, for how he typically behaves 
uh, whenever he's on camera. At the beginning, they're kind of like messing around. They're bigging each other up, making jokes at their own expense because they're anxious about making the video and they're honest about that. It's pretty delightful. I do enjoy, I understand the appeal of like uh, couples vloggers and sort of family vloggers, not family vloggers because that implies children at the forefront, which is something that I love that this couple doesn't do. So just a side note of bonus points for them for not putting their children into the social media sphere. But it is just nice wholesome content when you see a couple that clearly loves each other, messing around and enjoying each other's company and being just honest and sweet. It is just kind of fluffy good goodness. So Paul and Morgan spent the weekend, they spent 24 hours with Bethany Beale uh, and Dave. They were supposed to be spending the weekend with Girl Defined. Bethany just explains that because Kristen and Bethany are both mothers, Kristen homeschools her two children, you know, they have all the business stuff as well, they just couldn't make the schedules work, so they came to hang out with Bethany and ended up spending more time with Bethany and Dave. They say it was a great experience, Paul and Morgan were very respectful, good stuff. Dave's impression of Paul is very fucking funny. Hey Morgan, I think this might be a good direction. Yeah. Hey Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. They describe the experience as fun and challenging. Early on, Dave, he says he thinks the experience really benefited their marriage, which is really nice. And Bethany is like, in the long run. And I think that is a very kind of mature and honest response. She kind of clarifies that she means like, oh, sort of now is it? She's not saying like, hopefully in the future. She's saying like, sort of now, as opposed to then the time in between has passed and they've processed. Um, basically admitting it was very difficult at the time but it was to our benefit when so much of your life revolves around your faith and then one of the partnerships starts to deconstruct many of you watching this channel will know exactly how difficult that is especially when so much of your community is based in that faith it can only be that much harder when one of you is an evangelical influencer. I cannot imagine how difficult this has been. And to view having that conversation, that difficult conversation, as necessary and to the benefit overall, when it is, let's be honest, much easier to ignore those things. It's just very mature. It's really good relationship advice to portray. I just think that's if that was all this video was, that would still be a, a huge net bonus for... All the people that might see this, especially Bethany's audience. So they explain they've known for a long time that they disagree on a lot of things. They disagree on a lot of things to do with what they believe. Dave disagrees with a lot of the stuff that Bethany does with Girl Defined, which I thought was fascinating to know. Me too! <laughs> they express that sort of through their relationship they kind of come to the conclusion that they will just agree to disagree. This is where it's difficult for me to understand, where I understand that I come from a different cultural background, because it's difficult for me to get it. I understand conceptually that it's perfectly healthy to do that if those things don't bother you enough. If they aren't fundamentally important things to you that you disagree on, then yeah, that's awesome. I can't help but wonder and speculate on the details because of course Girl Defined at its core and its messaging, what it preaches is very judgmental <laughs> and it does advocate for living a very specific way. So it's interesting to me that the spouse of somebody who is telling people they ought to live this one specific way, does not agree with living that specific way, and maybe doesn't live that specific way. And uh, again, I'll get back to this later, but I hope that's something that Bethany addresses at some point. It would be really great if she did. So, uh, you know, a part of me, and I think a knee-jerk reaction that some people, uh, especially either skeptics or progressive Christians, might have this little natural irk at kind of there's almost, there's a hint of, again, we don't know the details, but there's a hint of hypocrisy in Bethany being in a marriage with someone who doesn't adhere to the things that she claims in Girl Defined are so important and the right way to live by the word of God. They go off for a while about how Paul and Morgan are so nice and they talk about their haters and blah, blah, blah. I'll keep my thoughts on this short. I will just say plenty of people can be really nice and friendly and then go on their podcasts and tell people not to go to their friend's wedding because being gay is wrong. I think being nice and being good are very different things. Nice is different than good. I definitely cannot sing today, but the musical Into the Woods teaches us that that is the case. Um, I'm sure Paul and Morgan can be very nice, but they, they do sort of act, Bethany and Dave sort of act like, guys, don't be hateful to them, we've met them and they're really nice. To us a heterosexual crit this is again this is a bit like when i talked about paul and morgan hanging out with jacqueline and david frank 
we're a nice heterosexual American couple, and this is a nice heterosexual Christian American couple who share a lot of their values. To be fair, it sounds like Paul in particular is great at asking the difficult questions and is really open to those discussions. I think that that is really great. I think he probably just comes to the opposite conclusion that I would like. The fact that people are nice to people in their community isn't maybe related to why the haters have a problem with Paul and Morgan. It's probably more that they are not good rather than I bet they're not nice when they go and stay at somebody's house as a guest. Like, I'm sure they're perfectly nice. I bet if I met them, they would be, you know, nice, at, at least in the first instance, until we got into the fucking debate. You know what I mean? Like, most people are fundamentally nice, especially in the real world, compared to their private personal thoughts or how they are on the internet. Let us move on. Uh, Bethany explains that part of the reason this has been such a difficult few days is because um, instead of walking away from those conversations, they've really pushed into these difficult topics where her and Dave disagree um, their differences in faith, which is really, again, just really fucking commendable. Anyone who has been in that situation knows how easy it is for one person to just walk away because this is too hard, I desperately wish to hold on to these beliefs and you are challenging them. A lot of people just walk away at that point and I think it, it speaks to the strength of the relationship and especially Bethany's love and strength and willingness to listen, I think is that that is really great. So Dave goes into a little bit what is actually happening regarding his faith. First off, he has always apparently had a lot of different values to Paul and Morgan as well as Bethany. He was working through deconstructing some things before their guests come over. Bethany expresses here that she has mixed feelings about using the term deconstructed, um, so I'm only using it regarding Dave or only using it uh, in the ways that they have used it themselves. Um, she kind of says that she is deconstructing some aspects of her faith but is still a strong believer in Christ. I think what she's saying in this bit is she technically agrees with the term and she doesn't have a problem with it or Dave using it, but because there are connotations with coming away from Christianity in general, she doesn't so much want it applied to her because that faith is still really important to her. Which I think is a very, uh, again, a very reasonable and understanding way to set that boundary, especially to an audience of fundamentalist Christian followers. It is probably really important for her to make that boundary known. Dave is more comfortable with the term because he is deconstructing from Christianity and he sees himself going very much in that direction. So they had Paul and Morgan over who were sort of provoking them, not provoking, that has a negative connotation, but um, sparking discussion and asking these difficult questions and uh, and he says something, Dave says something essentially just broke over that weekend. Essentially, Dave here has found what many people find, which is the advice like you see on Girl Defined, expressing that living this specific kind of religious life is the key to happiness, is not always actually true. I really love this part, Dave's honesty here, talking about when you're here and you realise that finding happiness in your faith just isn't working for you and people say things like you need to find God's love more you're not trusting him and that being a frustrating experience and and feeling very um like you must be at fault like you're doing something wrong because that is essentially what people are telling you if you're not happy and you're not happy in your faith you're clearly not trying hard enough Apparently the truth aspect <laughs> which to me it, it is funny to watch this video coming from a skeptic background because <laughs> they come from such opposite ends of the spectrum to me. Like, they come from a faith and happiness, and it's interwoven into my life. And then the, the question of the, the reality and the truth of it comes later. Whereas I come from, is it true first? I'm not worrying about if it will make me happy if it's a lie, <laughs> you know? It's just, it's very, it, it is really fascinating as a discussion. I do think listening to the faithful and people who are brought up faithful is very valuable in developing a bit of empathy for that position because it can be very hard as a skeptic to to be like if you didn't think it was true why did you why did you keep trying to believe it that's weird you know we can have those knee-jerk reactions and uh it is nice to get that bit of understanding kind of try and bridge that gap so these questions around 
truth and different beliefs have been a part of Dave's life for years, apparently even since before they were married, which is kind of a bombshell, and I imagine was a bit of a bombshell for Bethany to find out even more so. Apparently it just took essentially having a bit of a crisis to really start pushing through, which I think, again, is something a lot of people will really relate to. He talks about how he's been part of a Christian community for so long, asking these questions and the potential places that could take him is really scary. He was thinking it could make it hard to go to church, it could make it hard to be married to Bethany. Deconstructing like this, especially within a faith-based marriage, is so brave, and it really does speak to a character strength of Bethany's, as well as the supportive characters in their lives. Characters. People. <laughs> it speaks to a strength of character that those people are willing to support Dave through this, you know, whatever happens long term. A lot of people unfortunately don't get that support, so that is also something to be celebrated. I didn't feel tied down anymore to basically anything that would keep me from fully questioning my mm. beliefs and my faith. And I even found myself wanting Christianity to not be true. I know I said this already, but the bravery to come out and say, even just to your Christian family and friends, I don't think this is true, is already enormous. But to be willing to say it on social media, when you know and you struggle with the kind of hate you inevitably get, it's really big balls fucking stuff. And I am just super grateful that Dave and Bethany have the balls to do this, because it really just opens up the conversation and the messaging that not bottling up a faith crisis in a relationship is the better thing to do and it is possible to love and support each other through this that is just so valuable to share. Dave speaks a bit about how a year ago he had all of these questions and he was talking to his pastor, he wasn't sure if he should be taking communion, and he attempted to just really leap into his faith and say, okay, I know this might not be the most rational option, but that's what faith is, you just trust in it. And this is definitely a great example of one of those disconnects that can happen between people who come from a faith-based life and people who don't. If you take that leap of faith and you have a heavily religious life and you are very happy, it's easy to think, hey, my heart is full of Jesus and I'm living my best life. Life is good. And then it would probably be difficult to understand people who that doesn't work for. People like Dave who find, I'm still not happy. What's going on? <laughs> on the flip side, you have people who have never had that assumption that happiness and faith in something are intertwined, and we approach religion like, well, is there any evidence? If not, how can you believe it? Why do you believe it? Yeah, it's just a lack of common experience between those sort of two groups that can be baffling for everyone involved. Dave does put some blame on himself here for being dishonest about his sort of secret deconstruction thoughts, and I think he's right to apologise to Bethany, because honesty is very important in a relationship, and obviously her faith is super important to her. But again, and a quick scan through their comments section proves that most people understand exactly how fucking hard that conversation is, especially if you're deeply in love with someone, you want to be with them for the rest of your life, and you think, maybe these questions will be answered, maybe I will find that happiness, I will leap into my faith and it will be all right, so I'll just push those doubts to one side. It's very understandable. You know, do you risk your whole life with this person you love to voice these little niggling doubts? Most people probably wouldn't. Dave asks Bethany at the end of that bit how that part was for her, and she thanks him for sharing and checks if he's okay. Guys, obviously this is a video, we can't know if this is truly how they are, but it really seems through this whole thing like Bethany and Dave have a super healthy, strong love and respect for each other, which I think is a reason why this video is resonating so well for people. It is just fucking so nice to see, especially in the landscape, especially in like the traditional marriage sphere, which is riddled with jokes about hating your wife and how your husband is so annoying or he uh, snores and that's why you're tired on uh, your video. Oh, but Matt and I aren't married, so it's okay. <laughs> it is easier for me in the kind of sceptic community to resonate with Dave here to understand the difficulty he must be going through having these questions and having people of faith in his life where it's really important to them. But even I am aware of how difficult this must be for Bethany and how in the face of that she gives Dave the floor to speak because this is, this is his, this is something that they're working through together. 
but this moment is his moment and she gives him the space to speak and he says things throughout this video Dave would be saying things about, I don't think this is true and this isn't rational and blah, blah, blah. And I'd be looking at Bethany like, oh my gosh, that must be really hard to hear. And to her credit, she she is just sitting and listening openly. It looks like she might be struggling sometimes, but she doesn't let any judgment slip out. I mean, that is probably the benefit of going through this together for a while before you put a video out because those reactions and emotions would be perfectly natural. But so we get to see them in this state of just being totally supportive and considerate and, and listening. And it's just, it is, it's, mm, love it. I didn't make the sound. I made a different sound and it was just weird. Bethany does start getting emotional talking about this kind of stuff. She expresses how difficult this is for her, but that's never her point. And her point here is that despite this being difficult, she's always felt that they were basically made for each other. And that through all of this, they have only managed to love each other more. <laughs> Bethany expresses that her fears regarding the future are about exactly what happens because they see Dave probably moving towards deconstructing more. At the moment, they still go to church together. He still leads their morning devotional. Now he uses language like the Bible says instead of God says, etc., which I think is a great way to handle it. They they talk briefly about how they're handling things with their kids. I don't really want to go into it. I think that what they're doing makes perfect sense for their relationship. Multi-faith relationships with children are incredibly complicated. I obviously would prefer that all children were raised secular. That's not a realistic expectation in this situation right now, but to me it seems like the way they're handling it is very smart and I'm not here to tell anyone how to raise their children anyway, so it all sounds very positive. Let's not worry about it. So Bethany's kind of concern is around the fact that Dave is going to be deconstructing more. She doesn't see herself deconstructing any further, or at least not in any way that would take her away from her faith. She basically reiterates my point from earlier. She says she doesn't see that happening because she likes being a Christian. She likes having that faith in God and... Yeah, it's a lot easier to stay in your faith and worry less about those intellectual questions if you're having a good time. It is often an emotional issue before, or, or even alongside it being a rational issue, or an intellectual issue. You can tell, and Dave is honest about it as well, that he would love for Bethany to deconstruct from her faith. Me too, man. <laughs> Likewise, Bethany kind of expresses that it would be ideal for them to both be on the same page with their faith. And they kind of are both honest about being like, I would prefer it if you were, th if you thought the same as me, but you don't and I love you. So this is what we're working with. And that's healthy as fuck, yeah. <laughs> it is super lovely. I am so happy that they have this special love for each other. I do hope they continue to support each other to the point where it can become a bit more peaceful and less stressful. To the elephant in the room, Bethany, with her girl-defined work in books, blogs, and videos, has said with Kristen that Christian women should not date non-Christians. A believer and a non-believer should not be unequally yoked. Is That's the phrasing from Kristen. <laughs> Let's be realistic, I'm not expecting Bethany to, while she is processing this in her real life with her real family, Make a video overnight going, oops, guys, I was wrong. That's completely unrealistic. Give the girl some time. She is a wife and a mother. Her faith is extremely important to her, but she loves her husband very much. This is a lot to figure out, and it might take a while. However, I do think at some point it needs to be acknowledged that not only did she hold those views, but she taught them as coming from the word of God and spiritually important. Her teachings might have led people, remember that they specifically target young women, her teachings might have led people to not make choices that they maybe wanted to make, and if she has reached a different conclusion about that which she is still making money off of in her books and her videos, at some point she needs to take responsibility for that. I think it's wonderful and acceptable and great and lovely to change your mind on big picture things. There's nothing wrong with that, it's very healthy, but if you teach people, you should live your life this way because it's the word of God and the best way to be a good godly woman, changing your mind on that 
is huge. It needs to be addressed. You've given yourself a huge amount of responsibility by positioning yourself as a teacher, which is how Bethany refers to herself even still in this video. And if something out there in your teachings is wrong to the point of hypocrisy, it needs to be addressed. And I think the same goes for any big picture ideological opinion changes she might have had that she might be deconstructing, because let's not forget, a lot of those teachings are really harmful. A couple of times through the video, Bethany refers to her relationship with Dave as being unique. She says they are uniquely able to love each other. And I wonder if... I hope this isn't true, and I hope that if it is true, it changes, but I wonder if she is maybe rationalising her previous views and teachings with the fact that they are just really special. Like, most Christian women still shouldn't date a non-Christian or marry a non-Christian, but she and Dave are just like really uniquely special, and I don't know how common multi-faith marriages are in general, but especially for somebody deconstructing, to have a deconstructed person and a faithful person together in a marriage is probably fairly rare. It's not like, they're not like the only ones in the world. <laughs> they're not the only people in the world that love each other that much. I, I, half my brain seeing her talk like that is like, it's so sweet, and that is a really like, when you're in a relationship like that and you think like, oh my god, we love each other so much, it's like insane. Like, I get that, I love that, it is a really wonderful feeling. It, the other half of my brain is like, excuse me, I love my partner a lot. Like, probably as much as you love your husband. You're not, you're not uniquely able to love each, like, it irks me a little bit. I understand it based on her previous teachings. That's my sort of guess that that is kind of a, maybe a rationalization of her thinking that interfaith marriages aren't a good idea for Christian women. Maybe they just love each other so much that it can work for them is what she's thinking possibly. I hope that if that's true that changes. So like I said, I don't expect a whole public life reversal overnight. I think whatever happens, opening up this conversation and being so honest about it is to be celebrated on its own. I would really like in future to see more detail about what's changed in Bethany's faith and uh, ideally some good responsible thoughts on how that relates to what she's been teaching us as the right way to live for young women according to God uh, for many, many years now. Good God, that's a huge amount of responsibility. And when she did those things, I'm 100% confident that when she taught everything that she taught, she was 100% confident in that being the right and godly way. Although knowing that she and Dave have always disagreed on those certain things, is that brings a new angle to her whole girl-defined career that is quite fascinating. Or at least the last eight years of her career. Last thing, near the end, they talk about comments and haters and stuff, and they do identify that there is a difference between haters, people who are essentially just bullies, um, and people who are fairly critical of views they consider harmful. Bethany also expresses a frustration with people who are generally fairly critical, but sometimes pick up, like, random things from Reddit or criticise them for something that isn't actually true, and damn, I do resonate with that. The only time I really lose my patience with the comment section is when someone makes an assertion about me being terrible because of this thing that I don't actually do. Bethany, I get you there. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a thought regarding this haters and critics and the hurtful views thing. A few times through the discussion of haters and, and reactions and comments and stuff, they mention people criticise them for views they think are harmful or hurtful. I guess at this point they're used to that, but they are very casual about that in a way that I read as, as strange. In a way that is a little bit difficult for me to sort of understand and reconcile, because having a hater who's like, you're stupid, I hate your stupid ditto jumper, and your stupid boy hair, go to hell, stinky. Yeah, ha ha ha. When there's a significant amount of people who say that the things you teach are hateful, and hurtful, and actually harmful to real human beings in society, I just find that a weird thing to be able to brush off. I guess that comes with being brought up fundamentalist Christian, right? She's probably always believed the weird things she believes about, say, the queer community, and has also probably always known that there are haters out there who think that it's very hateful that she thinks those things, and 
so that is normal to her in a way that she's able to brush this off. It's just, I find it um, strange. I find it difficult to understand. I personally, excuse me, I'm recording a video right now. Could you, uh, thank you. If it drops after 22 seconds, that means it's a robot. I'm getting a phone call. I didn't actually explain that part. It's about installing a smart meter. <laughs> Anyway, it brings to mind an example from my content, which is that I, a few people expressed to me that the way I referred to uh, older people, if I was reacting to somebody, uh, you know, like a an older preacher or something, and I'd say he's an old man with these old man views, blah, 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 or, or use the term boomer. And my initial reaction to that was like a knee jerk, like, I can say what I want. That's just a silly joke. Like, why does that matter? That's not important. People joke about young people all the time, blah, blah, blah. And I sat with it for like two weeks and then was like, what the fuck am I talking about? It's not important to my like personality. <laughs> it's not fundamental to my existence that I am allowed to make like assumptions or jokes about the elderly. Why am I holding on to that knowing that it upsets at least a few people who watch my content when it would be easier and more inclusive for me to stop doing that and so I'm gonna try and stop doing that and that's where I'm at and that was like maybe more people have said that and I just because I can't read all the comments um but that was like like three or four people maybe for me and that was enough for me to be like what am I doing I'm an idiot why would I cling to something completely unnecessary and unimportant that is apparently hurting even a couple of people. Why would I do that? The idea, the concept of like a significant amount of critical responses as well, not just like comment section, you know, Instagram replies, whatever, but like hour long critical videos about how harmful and hurtful your, your views are. A significant number of people, like an enormous amount of people, probably more people than actually subscribe to my views and watch my content for my views who agree with me, uh, think that I have hateful views and that I spread hatred and hurt people. Maybe in their personal lives, like Bethany and, and Kristen actually think about that, struggle with that more than the nothing that it seems like, but it t to me, watching even this video where they are very open and honest and they are kind of open to critical responses, it does feel a bit complacent and like they kind of bundle a lot of criticism in with just haters and, you know, negative reactions. I just find that really hard to digest, you know? It is it is difficult for anyone. And I know, as I said, based on experience, it is difficult to get over that. People think I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. This is this is my view, and if people disagree, they just disagree. But you kind of have to work through that as a grown-up who is responsible for, you know, however many viewers. And I guess this just comes into conflict with Bethany's faith, so she has to weigh up those two things. But yeah, the way she refers to... And, and Dave as well, I guess they're both just used to it at this point with Bethany doing Girl Defined for so long, but the way they are just like, yeah, people think that your... People think that your content is hateful and hurts people. And they just kind of like blasé pass by that in a way that sort of blows my mind a little bit. So that's one thing. Bethany answers a general comment near the end. They kind of go through comments at the end. Um, and she answers a general comment asking if they have any friends who aren't just like them, you know, ideologically, I suppose. And she basically says, like, of course, we speak to different people. Like, she married Dave and Dave thinks differently. And I think there's a little bit of a disconnect here as well, because probably what Bethany lives in her life is different from what she presents as a teacher and a writer and a podcaster. We've spoken earlier about how people are generally more nice and accepting in real life. That's just how it goes. But I hope that at some point she is able to look at her work with Girl Defined and see why people ask that question, because she has dedicated so much time to expressing that thinking differently is wrong. Is wrong according to God, the almighty lord, and, you know? Like, people aren't just being ignorant and, and rude when they ask that. There's a precedent for thinking that based on what she has taught with Girl Defined. Heck, their book, again, watch my video with Savvy, their book has this whole mean girl section. 
this is the bit that has stayed with me from the book, you guys, about how tragically awful the lives of their childhood friends are who deconstructed or became less fundamentalist. Oh, one of them's a single mother, poor her, and here we are, we stayed in our perfect Christian faith and we have ideal lives, is basically that section of the book. Of course people read that and think, wow, you're really mean about people who think differently to you and you must not have relationships with those people because in the book you certainly don't have good relationships still with those people. There's a both sides thing here, right? Yes, it's important for us as consumers to remember that social media is not an accurate portrayal of how someone actually is in their day-to-day life. But also, Bethany needs to take responsibility, in my ideal world, for putting that idea out there in the first place. It doesn't come from nowhere. People aren't just conjuring up this, like, you don't accept people who have different thoughts to you. You couldn't be friends with someone who has different thoughts to you. It doesn't come from nowhere. It comes from their teachings. <laughs> so that is this video. That is, uh, Dave is deconstructing. Bethany is deconstructing some non-specific ideas regarding her faith. They are working through it. At the moment, they absolutely see their way forward being remaining married and they see Dave as deconstructing more in the future. It basically sounds like this is going to be an ongoing conversation for them, and I can foresee this taking a long time to settle. As such, I would really, really love to get a bit more detail. I'd love to get Bethany's thoughts on the way her life is contradictory to the things she has taught, um, and her taking a bit of responsibility for that. But again, it's not like if I don't see that next week, I'm going to flip a table. If they take a year to figure this out for themselves before they even mention it again, I think that would be completely reasonable. Those are just my hopes for the future. Plenty to really, really enjoy about this video. The honesty, the openness, the support and love they express for each other despite being having these conflicting views, just seeing anyone, seeing Dave talk openly about being in the middle of a Christian community and deconstructing from that faith because it is the most honest way to live his life and the way that is necessary for him to find that freedom and experience real happiness again and let go of the, the sort of stress of trying desperately to pretend or to find that faith where it is maybe lacking. That is just such a good thing to see. It really, really is just a net gain. The comments are all really positive and I can completely understand why. In the past, I think Girl Defined have curated their comments and turned off comment sections. I'm not making a a statement on that. If they want to do that, I think that's perfectly fine. But just as an addendum to my the comments seem really positive, there's always the possibility that that is not an accurate portrayal of the comment section. However, it does demonstrate that people really resonate with this story. I think the skeptic community is fascinated by this because it is really interesting and fabulous to see a deconstruction story sort of happening live because a lot of us, a lot of the community has that same story and has a lot of support to express for Dave. And then there are plenty of people who might be in that position or in Bethany's position and seeing that they can support and love each other through it and be open and honest about it is just it's a really wonderful thing all round i just hope paul isn't too fucking smug <laughs> this deconstruction process started for dave and bethany before paul and morgan went round props to paul and morgan for igniting good honest conversation and asking those difficult questions but i watched paul and i just he better not get smug about it that's all i'm saying do please please leave your thoughts down below i am super interested to hear i want to hear from skeptics i really want to hear from people who have deconstructed anyone who is a christian and has thoughts on these situations i just want to hear it all because this is oh this is this is really just even aside from the the sort of emotional um, value of the conversation for people. This is just deeply, deeply interesting, and I want to hear a lot of discussion. Please and thank you. But don't comment on on this. Unless you want to know where my jumper is from, which people often do, it's from Black Milk Clothing. You're welcome. Quick thing, the Baffy campaign has been extended. There are a few more days to order yourself a Rainbow Pride Baffy, which will arrive in time for Pride Month. Hell yeah. He's a soft, lovely boy. Let me get him for you so you can see him IRL. He is a good, lovely boy. He's very sweet. His purple legs match my jumper perfectly. Look, he blends in. A certain tone through the uh, through the spectrum blends in perfectly with my ditto jumper. So if you have a ditto jumper, 
you should buy a rainbow baffy. People were loving the rainbow baffy. A few people were a bit upset that they couldn't get one in time. They didn't think they were going to be able to get one in time. So that has extended for a few days. Do click the link down below to check it out. I'll put a pinned comment. There's a link on my community page as well. Um, so go and check it out. Do consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. That would be really nice. Maybe like this video. Maybe click on the notification thing because I think sometimes videos don't come up for everyone all the time. So if you click on the notification thing, then it will notify you. And I have so many videos coming up on so many different, wildly different topics coming up. You probably don't want to miss at least one of them. So maybe you get a little subscribe, a little notification? Yeah. Man, I was busting my balls fighting YouTube content ID <laughs> on last week's video. They, they, they've been demonetizing me to hell. So if you do want to support what I do in this channel, you can become a channel member, you get some silly little emotes and comment priority. The best way to support this channel and get extra goodies, there is a discount code for Baffy. There is also a, I guess, a director's cut without the... Um, the various edits and trimmed sections. I had to cut out some jokes and stuff. What was happening with content ID on my Ancient Aliens video was that it would flag a huge section that included multiple clips and big sections of me talking. So I just had to, there, there were some things I couldn't remove the clip, you know, the context without removing me responding to it. So there's a full version, you know, full screen replies and stuff on Patreon. Whenever that happens, I post the sort of alternative cut that I would like to be the real cut onto Patreon so that somebody can enjoy it. So if you go to patreon.com slash videos, you can see stuff like that. With that, I must give a huge thank you and a shout out. Thank you so much, my lovely patrons, because good grief, I, I don't know what I would do without you, especially when I'm freaking out because uh, YouTube's demonetizing me. <laughs> like, thank you very much. Thanks, Satan for Patreon, uh, and I will give you a big old shout out and a thank you, especially Conla. God damn it, Conla. Most importantly, have yourselves a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon. What do you think about Dave deconstructing? Cool.